Hello, this is Drew from Moon Audio, and I'm really excited today to be here with Bill Voss. And we are going to talk about a couple of products. You'll notice that Kayla just did one on all of the Techniques turntables. And now we're going to step over to where I really shine and, and, and the products that I really adore. Uh, we're going to talk about the SUG 700 M2 uh, integrated amplifier, as well as the Super Audio network player, uh, can of soup, everything, kitchen sink, the G7 M G700 M2. Uh, it's an amazing all-in-one media player. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, Drew. Thanks for that introduction. Thank you for having me. I'm really enjoying this um, this session with you and Kayla today, and um, just great to work in this kind of environment and be able to reach reach your customers and our customers this way. So I appreciate everything you're doing yep. and uh, applaud your efforts. So. Hopefully we can shed some light on some of the questions your customers are asking or what yep. you have in mind and, and happy to talk to you about. So the SUG 700 M2, um, in my mind, is a very unique device. It is not really truly like other integrated amplifiers out there. It's really special. And to be quite frank, I don't think the world knows enough about how special it is in terms of all the different things that it really does. I think the most important thing to enlighten customers about is that it's not what we would typically call a class D amplifier. So how about diving into it and sort of explain Technique's approach to a digital amplifier that's not really class D? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of, a, this amplifier is the second generation, by the way. And, yep. and just to be clear, our models might confuse people, especially in this conversation, because SUG 700 M2 is the amplifier, and SLG 700 M2 is the networking player. So we're talking obviously about the amplifier now, and this is the M2 version. As I say, it was originally SUG 700, and if you look at the two straight on, they look identical. So right. you know it's hard to tell them apart. So you do want to look for that M2 uh, designation, and in the in the process. So all our amplifiers in the new Techniques line since 2015 are, are true digital amplifiers. They're Techniques digital amplifiers, and it's our own design, um, and many automatically want to call it Class D. It's, it's understandable in some respects because people think of Class D means digital amplifier. Kind of does, and it doesn't, because in, in the process of a Class D amplifier design, it, it has to go into a uh, analog domain at some point. So this is what distinguishes techniques and being different in that respect, because when a digital signal hits our amplifier, it remains digital the entire process. And there's no DAC, per se. Everybody just assumes that there's a DAC, but there is no DAC. It's just right. a digital amplifier. So what it has to do, Drew, it has to understand the digital uh, content. And what was the first thing that any, what is the job one of any DAC or any digital processor is to line up the bits, right? So yep. our Geno engine is to uh, eliminate any kind of jitter and get that digital signal pristine so that the, so that the amplifier can process it. And there may be conversions in the digital domain, say from PCM to PWM, but it, it's all digital operation. What we've done uh, with with this G700 amplifier in the transition to a G700 Mark II, we've added the GAN FETs in the output stage, and these are designed to have the the most power, uh, most efficient power transmission output to the to the loudspeaker. So that's the last segment of the digital amplifier that is going to benefit from an M2 improvement from the G700 to the G700 M2, we added that stage. And we also added some distortion removing uh, capabilities and some other things that trickle down from our reference amplifier, the 1000. So we do a lot of that in the turntable line and techniques line in general does trickle down technology from some of our best models. And we bring that down into a more affordable product for the capability. So the that's one difference is they've improved the, the way the amplifier operates um, with that. They've improved the headphone amplifier and they 
They added the, they improved the phono preamp. It's a better phono preamp with capability to have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, moving magnet and moving coil. And there's a subsonic filter and a, um, in the phono stage, you can turn on or off. And there's also a phase switch that you can adjust. And you can also adjust the level of input of the cartridge in terms of gain so it matches clearly. So very flexible uh, amplifier in that sense. And um, they have preamp outputs and they also have main inputs. So it can be used as two channels of a home theater system if you wanted to. So, so flexible. And you look at the amplifier and it's like, where are all these buttons and switches? You know, how do right. the remote control has quite a bit of, you know, functionality. Our remotes are very high quality. And, um, you know, they the meters are gorgeous and you look at the front of it and a lot of it is in the menu so there's a little gooey display and you can access all sorts of things from the menu you can add you can change the tone controls the balance um there's a function really as we talk about the digital amplifiers in general one of the key functions from the very beginning with techniques was this function called lapc for load adaptive yep. phase calibration and it's something really you can only do with a digital amplifier. Um, so it's not a room correction. It's not a room equalization, but it's a better, it's a learned process that learns how to drive, how to, how the amplifier should drive the loudspeaker uh, to its best ability. So based you know, on its impedance the, characteristics, correct? Exactly. So what we do and you know how in this business, all these years, you know, some amplifiers work better than others with two with you know say two loudspeakers yep. and horn loaded loudspeakers are a great combination so that's one example but there's also electrostatic loudspeakers that like certain amplifiers and you know some speakers like class a amps and need to have huge power supplies and and operate down to two ohms and things like that but um the characteristics in our amp is um is something that the, the amplifier has a being a digital amplifier it can perform computations essentially you know it has a uh, built-in program where you push a button all you do is push the button once and it starts this measurement you'll hear some tones coming out of the loudspeakers and you'll hear some from the left channel the right channel and within i don't know less than 90 seconds i think it's finished it's complete and what it's learned is how better to drive that loudspeaker in terms of gain and phase and there's you can see a before and after um, yep. part that we have on our website that shows you what's happening. It's very subtle in many cases, um, sometimes more than others, though. And the good news is you're not married to it. You know, it's just a button. You know, it's yep. a function. And you, if you don't like it, you can turn it off. But I would say silly not to leave it on all the time because I, I've never really heard anyone say that they didn't feel it was better. Maybe one person said, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like the difference. I'm going to turn it off. And it depends on what speaker you connect. The important thing is it works with any speaker. It's not just a technique speaker handshake. You know, it's so it, it gives that amplifier the best ability how to drive your loudspeaker in those terms. And like I say, it, it's it's something that a digital amplifier can do that other amplifiers cannot. So I, I like that capability. And, and I also like with all the streaming content that is available and everything that I've been, you know, listened to since 1982, can't say everything, but I have 6,000 CDs, I think in my, my house right now, maybe more. And, you know, that's, it's digital, it's digital content. So, you know, why do I want to take that out of the digital world and right. put it in a piano and convert it? You know, it's, it's just great to play it in my uh, techniques player send that digital signal to that amplifier directly and just yep. enjoy the pristine digital bitstream and hear it in an in the most up-to-date way to, to listen because it's the most modern state-of-the-art processes that are in the players and in the amplifiers and um i think one of your questions was what's the well we may want to ask me later and we'll get to it i'm sorry if i'm jumping ahead but no 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 yeah, so that's that's the some of the synergy. We talked about synergy of Techniques products with mm -hmm. Kayla, and this is certainly an, an area that has some synergy when you use those together with ours. It's just a natural way of enjoying it. But with any any equipment, you can also appreciate the benefits. So, let's go back for a second to the, the to the phono stage and the headphone amp. So, obviously, some of the purest vinyl guys are going to be a little upset with the fact that the phono stage, as I understand it is going to be converted to digital, right? To do all of the 
loading characteristics and then again at the way last point turn back to analog you know so you're right you're 100 percent right is remember we started out talking about this that um anytime a, a digital signal hits the amplifier it, it remains digital it doesn't have yep. to be converted of course for that digital amplifier to enjoy an analog signal it has to be converted yep to digital so the first thing that happens with any of the analog inputs whether it's a line input or a phono input it goes to a, a 2496 dac a very high quality dac it might even be higher than that depending on the model that you get and uh as we know from um, a lot of people that arc are archiving their digital their lp collection to digital we all know that the digital recording process that 2496 can easily resolve you know whatever is on an lp in terms of dynamic range frequency response and signal to noise ratio so you know 2496 is going to pull in and you're not going to miss anything and i have to tell you all the presentations we've done from the very first time we introduced our turntables at ces um and any of the shows we go to then we play these these uh, systems are turntables through our digital amplifiers and uh, you know the reviewers and the, the the people that are just appreciating the sound just love it and sometimes i i i surprise them and say you know isn't that sound of incredible uh, incredible vinyl sound is so incredible isn't it why you know why do people listen to digital and they say yeah i love vinyl and so pure and i said well did you know you just listen to that's right uh, digital picture of that yep. vinyl and yep. the, the fact is if you do it right it's you know it, it's incredible. There's there's no loss. So yeah. a lot of people have difficulty getting by that, but um, it's something that is, you know, worth listening to. And and as I say, I I'm I'm not missing anything. I feel I just our products just sound incredible together and with other gear. It's just a nice nice way to. It's the future of amplification. You know, everybody's driving a. Uh, an electric car these days right you know i mean that's the future it may take us a while to get there but it is definitely the future and if it isn't electrical it'll be hydrogen powered or, or yeah. god knows what but you know it's the 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 engineers that go to learn about making all this high-end audio equipment if they if they end up in this business they'll probably be in another aspect of consumer electronics or electronics in general they're not teaching them how to build a class a amp or a class a b amp they're you know that's all been done 60 yeah. years ago you know so this this technology is the future and it's it's here from techniques it was here in 10 years ago uh when we introduced it and it just keeps getting better and they learn more and more capabilities of what to do in fact um these new active loudspeakers that we have i know it's not part of this discussion um but we have this new product called uh, SCCX700 Active Loudspeaker. We introduced at the IFA show in Berlin uh, earlier this month, and we had a press uh, presentation at our headquarters in New Jersey recently, last week. And some of the functions that are using are, they're using digital amplifiers in these speakers, um, and they're using the Geno engine to to clean the signal and process it. And they have a new function in there that's also only capable of digital amplifiers and it's applied to control the driver to control the loudspeaker even further they apply the lapc internally because they know oh, wow. the speaker and the amplifier are made at the factory so they they don't have to run a process for that it's actually set up for that speaker but this is called a model based driver complement and uh it's going to uh kind of correct the driver if it ever is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's it's a long, complex explanation, which I'll save for another interview. But these these speakers are doing some interesting things uh, based on this, you know, the fact that we can do some of this in the digital domain and and active distortion removal. Uh, when we get to the player, there's a function called coherent processing in the player that's also similar to LAPC, but it's going to act on the digital bitstream of the player. So we can talk about that a little later. So. Again, you can't do these these steps with traditional uh, methods. Yeah. So this is what the cutting edge of what the Techniques Brain Trust is is working on. They're constantly coming out with you know new ideas, improvements, and you know some of it is very subtle, some of it is demonstrable, but it's it's definitely in in the future in in the future more of this type of uh, technology can be. Very, very helpful. And as I say, we went from 
the standard version to the M2 version. Those are the, and I, as I said, the headphone amplifier has been improved. I know you had some questions about the class AA headphone amp, but very yep. similar to the output stage where we prepare the last segment to go to the loudspeaker with a GAN FET, the headphones are an analog product, but to put GAN FETs in there in the full product, the full output stage, we had to put in a uh, kind of like a, 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 a DAC there to go to the headphones. If, if you read the description I have, it's going through a high quality DAC to pr prepare it for the headphone output. And um, the sound is great. I I've I don't have a lot of headphones, you know, to play with like you do down there. So I have Techniques headphones and old Paracost headphones. Uh, but I don't I don't have many headphones to listen and compare with. But um, the uh, the sound is very good. I'm I'm not a big headphone yeah. guy, but I know you are, and and it's something I encourage you to give a listen to. Oh yeah, we have. Yeah, it's probably better than than what you know a, a traditional headphone output on a receiver. Or oh, definitely. Amp would be. I I would have to yeah. say that. And then, and then the what an interesting thing is because it's a digital amplifier. Again, we've treated that that digital signal so in such a high quality that you know that end result is is pristine also so you, I, I don't think you're losing much you know if anything in that you know i would use the headphone amp in there and unless he really needed to drive a pair of inefficient you know or you know headphones maybe maybe that's when you get a headphone amp but i think most people would be happy and i think we have a similar headphone preamp in the 1000 amplifier as well yeah, it does, it's it's very effective with most of the uh, impedance characteristics of the headphones that we sell. I mean, some of the harder to drive headphones, which, you know, those guys always need a lot of beef behind them. But it does. Yeah, it does remarkably well with pretty much, I'd say, 75 percent of the headphones we have here. Um, and it's dead quiet. And, and we've even done some IEMs and it's dead quiet there. Um, I, we've had I mean, we've had some fun with this amplifier in, you know, having the. Uh, um, the uh, SL10 GR2 direct drive turntable connected to it and going back be between that. And I'm just going to say the media player because it's too many acronyms to stick in there. Um, and, and, and we've had some fun where, you know, people have actually preferred the vinyl, the same track, the vinyl versus the media player, even though we're doing an analog to digital conversion on the turntable. So, you know, it's still recognizing some of what's going on in the analog domain to still change things around a little bit enough to, you know, make it sound analog, if you will. So, I mean, yeah, it's it surprised some people. They were like, what? That's digital? No, that can't be, you know, but we've done the comparison and, and it's been a blast. You know, one of my questions was with the SACD network player, what makes more sense? Do we use the digital input or the analog uh, outputs? But, you know, like you said earlier, I mean, the, the keeping it as, uh, you know, digital as long as humanly possible is always going to be the best approach unless you've got to do SACD. So in that situation, you've got to use the analog outputs. And so let's let's move on to that player now. I mean, you know, at this price point, I don't <laughs> again, it, it, it surprises me that, you know, it, it isn't more um, world renowned because of how much you get in one box and not only that but an you know a cd player that has balanced output is you know i don't know of any of of them that cost thirty five hundred dollars let alone it also being a dac and a media stream a streaming player and has sacds i mean the value is really truly tremendous and and you know i told you earlier about you know the app and, and connecting to this you know I'd say the number one problem we have with media players are that people get so frustrated with trying to get it connected to the network and so forth. This thing, I'm not joking when I say it was the fastest setup and connection to get Cobuzz up and running with the app and finding the device on the network of any streaming media player that we've had here. Um, so simple. You know, I like the fact that we're sort of bypassing a lot of the extra uh, software to get things set up and whatnot. It's very simple. The app is easy. You know, I don't think everybody out there are rocket scientists and IT professionals and, you know, they don't buy their dedicated, you know, network systems. They're getting what's ever coming from Spectrum and Time Warner and all these other guys. And they don't want to be bothered with, all, you know, having to configure this network to just get it to work. And it was just like effortlessly, instantaneously found it. Away we went, logged into Cobuzz, done. 
you know, so. I agree. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. In yeah. fact, you know, it's uh, it's something we may not get credit for, um, but it's, Without a it is a very simple way to get things set up. And uh, it's a good app. It's very resourceful. And the more techniques product you have in your house, it actually will, f you know, it'll find it all on your network. Yep. If you have a C50 or a C70, or if you have these new active speakers, or if you have more than one G700 in your house and uh, uh, a GX70, that app will locate them all and it'll control them all and you can have different things happening in each room and just very flexible you know it's it's not sonos by any means but you know it's it's the flexibility and simplicity where you can enjoy you know the higher level of it and um, i do appreciate you mentioning the app because that that app works with any of our network products and it's a good app and we we do keep improving it and always use the most updated version and you'll be in good shape and um so I appreciate all the kind words about that. That player, that SLG 700 was the original player. The yeah. M2 player adds, you know, some some of the reasons for an M2 happened because we have some new new digital functionality and some, some requests that were made to improve it. But one of the main reasons we, we changed it and improved it was because we, we had to, uh, the... Uh, the original DAC that we're using in the G700, the company that made that, the AKM Fire, kind of mm, yeah. halted the production to try to get the same, you know, chipset. So we had to redesign the player out of necessity, and we did it with ESS, and they ended up with some really improved uh, specifications depending on what part you looked at. Um, and in the process, they they added a couple of features. Um, they added the uh, DAC capability, so you can connect. Uh, you can use that as a DAC. Let's say you didn't have a Technics amplifier and you wanted to have the very latest and highest quality, you know, digital analog conversion for your integrated amp or your preamp or whatever you're connecting it to. You can connect it directly to power amps, uh, whether you go the balanced out or, or, or RCAs, because there's also a, a volume control built in that you can adjust the volume going out. So a lot of flexibility with that. And... Um, if you are using it with equipment other than techniques, the, the new feature that's been added is a coherent processing function, which works similar to what the LAPC function did for amplifiers, but it's treating the digital signal and it's going to give you that similar type of application on gain and phase of that signal so that it's a pure signal that you're going to finally send from that unit to any any amplifier it doesn't go out the digital stage it's only going to come out of the analog that improvement is only right. going to come out of the analog stage so it's for people using something other than our amplifier but it's happening a lot a lot of people buy that machine to use with other gear of course so that's one of those features you'd benefit from um yeah the connectivity is just great um whether you use it connected or Wi-Fi uh, or what app you use, even if you AirPlay or stream to it, it, it's just so flexible. And when you switch the unit to enjoy your disc collection, let's say you're listening to CDs or SACDs, you can actually put it in pure audio mode. It, it turns off all the networking completely. It shuts down the networking portion of it. It takes, uh, you know, 60 seconds to, to for it to turn everything off and then you're ready to go. So there's a slight pause. And then you can switch back when you want to start streaming again. So very flexible in that sense. And don't forget, you know, it's got internet radio. You know, you want to leave your you want to leave your building and go out into the uh, into the world of streaming. You have, I don't know, thousands of internet radio stations. Oh yeah. You have podcasts. Uh, you have you can reach different podcasts. You have uh, Spotify, Tidal, Cobas. Deezer, Amazon, uh, and then if that's not enough, it's a Google Cast, so you can reach whatever Google has, which I think a lot of people probably use YouTube Music. So, and it's Apple AirPlay and it's Bluetooth. So, you know, it's endless capability and just again difficult to impress upon anyone in in this conversation because we don't, I can't hand you the machine, but. You know, if you lift the machine, you feel the build quality. It's isolated. Everything has. Oh, yeah. Built like a tank. You built like a tank. It's a center drive system for its gravity so that the drive system is centered in the unit. Analog segment separate, digital second, all kinds of shielding, all very heavyweight aluminum and high quality footers. And just everything is just built 
the way all the new technique stuff is built and it's just a superb product in that sense and i do think um it's a really high value product as high price as it is uh comparatively speaking i don't think anyone builds anything like it yeah. close to the price so and it uses a real cd drawer you know a fine quality cd drawer mechanism not one of those little slip slip in things lots you know like a compute slots yeah so um, I think you can appreciate all that and uh, the quality when you operate the controls and the GUI that it has. It's not a beautiful color display, but it's an OLED uh, display that can tell you everything. And there's so much functionality deep in the unit. Um, You're going to do most of the stuff on your phone anyway to control it. So it's irrelevant. You know, true. You, can, you can do it all from the app or from, from the remote. Yeah. And, you know, I, at the beginning, you know, when I first looked at picking up the Techniques line and I saw that it wasn't Rune certified, I sort of had, oh, why not? But you know what? I don't miss it at all, to be totally honest. And the fact that, you know, because the app is so good and intuitive, I don't think people are going to miss it. And guess what? Now they don't have to pay a subscription free, you know, fee for it, for Rune, you know. So um, I think that's a plus. There's a lot of you know, unfortunately, you know, all these services cost money. Some of them are cheap. Some of them aren't. But the more you stack them on top of each other, it adds up. I mean, it's just like your cable TV, right? You want to add Hulu, Netflix, blah, blah, blah. You got to do $20 here, $30 here. So it's nice to see that, you know, we didn't have to add one more layer to really get to a good quality software interaction for playing all these streaming services. It was simple, easy, cost effective. Um, no brainer. I mean, it's a great device. Um, yeah, if I may point to the Rune uh, topic, you know, our new loudspeakers, these active loudspeakers that I was telling you about, those are going to be considered Rune ready, and uh, they'll be labeled Rune ready. I believe that'll be the first product from us that actually says that. That'll be done over the air firmware update when they finally start to ship. So right. little by little, we're getting that certification, and um, I don't know if it'll carry on to other products but you know a lot of it is a lot of products are in for testing so yeah. um i can tell you with that amplifier you know if i if i connect my laptop to my to the pc input of the g700 amplifier either model and i open up rune in my laptop yeah it'll work and then open up the app get the rune app and it's it's just a wonderful system so yeah. i know how easy it is to use them um, i do appreciate you pointing that out so you know you don't have to have the entire rune Im implementation you get appreciated just for the basics if you have a computer connected to it so yeah. so it's good 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 to know that thank you for pointing that out yeah not just that i mean you know you can connect to your home network and even if you don't have rune you know on the app you can go straight to music server and by upnp you can lock into you know a nas that's set up for doing UPnP or, a, you know, your computer or a server so that you can pull all that music the same way you would with Rune anyway. So, like I said, I mean, there's nothing missing on this app. In fact, if anything, I mean, it's got more bells and whistles than Rune. I mean, Rune, you can only do Rune, Koba's title, you know, and some radio features. But here you can do Spotify, Amazon, Deezer, UPnP. You can plug in a USB key into the device. I mean... $35, I mean, $35, $3,500 is an amazing price point for all the different things that this does. I mean, it's a, win it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner, <laughs> you know, so absolutely love it. And some call it a Japanese army knife, you know, there it you just go. does so much. Yeah. So yeah. one of those speakers is going to start shipping. Uh, November, December time period. I, I encourage anyone to get their orders in um, yeah. because, and I, I mean, consumers too, because they're in high demand actually our the the attention for to these has, has been very um very early excitement about this by our dealers and and i think by the press they're very excited i'm getting a lot of calls to have them reviewed and just again ease and simplicity drew right i just yeah, yeah. take them out you put put one over here put the other over there plug them in the wall open up the techniques app turn the power on and in like in 15 seconds, it's they're set up and you're streaming high res, you know, and there's nothing else to connect unless you want to, you know, you can hardwire them together or you can connect a phono state, you can connect a Technique's turntable to it and they're just oh, wow. so flexible and the sound is incredible. They're coaxial, ring tweeter, just in, incredible technology in these and they come in three different colors. They're very beautiful and um, 
we'll, we'll get a pair down to you to evaluate one day. Oh, definitely. Time. So yeah, it's very exciting, and I think uh, I think they're gonna have a lot of attention soon. Three thousand dollars a pair, so they're not you know they're not the highest price points in that world, and they're you know they're not the most affordable. But what we're giving it in there is is a lot of value again, like the G seven hundred products. So yeah, actually, I think they're twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> Ninety-nine today. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Bill. This has been wonderful. Um, great information. I'm 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 so thankful for you joining us uh, and and helping me and Kayla present all of these products. Next, we'll have to do another one on the new turntable, the thirteen hundred. I don't want to get you know I, we didn't want to get into. There's so many you know there's too many products to try and do all at once. I think that one will be better done by itself because it is. You know, it's it's definitely going to be a fun one to talk about. Well, I want to thank you again. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, hit the hit the bell to subscribe and like, and give us a thumbs up. And stay tuned for the next Zoom call meeting with techniques. See you guys later.